Hi, it's Mary Ann here from Petal and Hive Beeswax Wraps. And today we're going to craft our own beeswax food wrap using Petal and Hive pre made DIY formula, DIY wax formula. And we're going to use the iron as our heat source to melt the wax into our fabric. So if you like what you're seeing in this video, please don't hesitate to click the like button. And if you're interested in knowing more about all things beeswax wraps, be sure to subscribe to Petal and Hive Beeswax Wraps channel because we're going to be having lots of content about all things beeswax wraps coming up. So stay tuned and um, hit that subscribe button. Okay, so we're going to get started now. So supplies, you're going to need a couple things in order to do beeswax wraps at home. Um, with the iron, you're going to want to have some parchment paper. You need an iron, an ironing board. I've made my own um, craft ironing board and if you watch to the end of the video, I'll show you how to make your own craft ironing board so you never have to worry about getting your ironing board dirty. Um, if you're using a regular ironing board, I do recommend putting an old towel on top of your ironing board in case any wax leaks out from the parchment paper, it'll just affect your old towel and not your good ironing board cover. Um, you also will need fabric that's prepared and ready for waxing. You'll of course need some Petal and Hive DIY wax and um, that's pretty much it. Okay. We're going to talk about fabric selection and preparation. It's important to know that different fabrics will wax up differently and different weights of fabrics will hold different amounts of wax. Lighter weight fabrics like fine shirtweight cotton will hold much less wax than a regular weight quilting cotton. Light, lighter weight fabrics will fit closer onto your foods, more like a second skin, and I find that those are excellent, really excellent for cheese. I find thicker, more like a typical quilting weight cotton are really nice for just regular everyday kind of wrapping, wrapping sandwiches, covering bowls, um, wrapping produce that you're gonna put into your crisper. For those types of things, I find that a regular quilting weight cotton works lovely. You can use fabrics other than cotton. Cotton is definitely the most easily accessible and typical use for beeswax wraps. But certainly you can try using a hemp or a hemp cotton blend. I find that the hemp turns out very thick, it's like a tank. And so I didn't find it to be that practical for me, but it might work for you. Um, I also find that I do not like using anything with like a polyester or a microfiber to it. I find that it just doesn't feel nice in my hand. Um, and I, I wouldn't be using a polyester on this. So just try to use natural type fabrics. Okay. When you're, select, when you're preparing your fabric, I strongly urge you to make sure that you wash it. If it's possible to do a second rinse on your fabric, do a second rinse. Avoid using any fabric softener during the rinse cycle and try to avoid using any bounce sheets or um, fabric softeners in the dryer as well. You want your fabric to be smooth, but not iron crisp smooth. You want it to have a little bit of texture to it so that the wax is something to kind of hold on to. You do not want it to be so smooth that your wax just slides right off, okay? Um, so when you go to cut down your fabric into piece, usable pieces, try your best to size it in the size that you need. Try to avoid oversizing your wraps because when they're too big, they're just quite cumbersome and awkward to use and you're not going to enjoy the, the experience of it. So try to just make, make as many as you need in the sizes that you need rather than making one giant one is what I'm getting at. So trim it down. When you're cutting it, to fa cutting it down to size, some people like to use pinking shears when they cut it to give it that little bit of a zigzag edge. Like you can see on this one, it's got a zigzag edge. That's a really handy thing for reducing the occurrence of fraying on the edges of your fabric. But if you don't have pinking shears and you have regular scissors, regular scissors will work just fine. Once it's waxed, it's not going to fray. So it's really only between like the cutting to the waxing that you have to worry about fraying anyways. So, um, okay, so now we're going to get started and I'll explain what we're going to do. So first of all, you're going to take your um, prepared fabric cloth, got one here, 
and you'll take a piece of uh, parchment paper as large as you need, like so long as it'll fit comfortably around your piece size of cloth, put it down on your ironing board and then take your cloth and set that down on top of it. I prefer to put the good side down and I prefer to wax on the wrong side of the fabric, but it really doesn't matter that much. The wax will permeate through the fabric, so it'll get to the other side anyways. It doesn't really matter. It's just whatever you do is good for you. Um, and then you're going to take your little wax pieces and some, it's really quite easy to rip them apart into smaller and smaller pieces. And that's a nice thing to do is make them small so that when you put them on the fabric and you're melting them with the iron, it'll melt a lot faster and be a little bit easier to move the wax around as well. So it's just like these little squares or whatever shape you got it in. I have some of them that are like leaf shapes and other ones that are like um, crown shapes, like the queen bee shape. So we've got little pieces and we're just putting it onto the, uh, the fabric here. So it's kind of difficult for you to see. So I'm going to just lift this so you can see what I'm doing here. So I've got my, my craft ironing board and I've got my piece of fabric good side down and I'm putting a little bit of wax on to, all over around on the surface of my, my uh, wrap. Um, in the instructions that came with your DIY wax from Petal and Hive, I provide a chart that explains how much wax to use for different sizes of fabric. In general though, when you're using an iron to melt the wax onto the fabric, it, it kind of presses the wax out as well as pushing it in. So it doesn't hold as much wax when you use the iron. So use a little bit less wax when you're using the iron method. So now I've got some wax spread out around. And I also would strongly urge if you're not sure and you don't have a scale to measure how much wax you're using, I strongly urge you to use less wax and add more as you go, as opposed to adding tons of wax in the beginning and having it make a big mess. It's always easy to um, add more. It's a little bit more hassle to take it away. If you do find that you need to remove some, some wax and you've got too much on there and it's kind of just flowing everywhere, Take a second dry piece of fabric, stick it on top, stick your parchment on, iron it, and it'll blot up into the dry fabric and it'll reduce how much wax you've got on your, on your wrap. So you've got your wax there and now you're going to take a second piece of parchment and you're going to set it right on top of your first piece of parchment. So it's like a, a wax wrap sandwich, parchment paper wax wrap sandwich. Now you're going to take your iron and you're going to move it around on your wax wrap until it melts. What I've found is when it comes time to open and lift away the top parchment paper, it will often cause the bottom parchment paper to lift up as well. So it's helpful to have a second set of hands or if you don't have a second set of hands, something to kind of hold that bottom parchment down is really handy. So if you did something like um, tin cans, um, like, you know, some cans of cream corn or something to hold down the bottom paper, just be careful. So I've got my iron here and I've got it set to um, a silk synthetic setting. You can see here, I've got my fabric and I've got my little pieces of wax all over on it and I'll, I think I'm going to add just a little bit more. I think I'm a little bit short on uh, wax here and you know I'm just spreading them evenly around on the uh, fabric. It's really quite convenient and fun to do this when you're um, using the DIY wax. It's pre-made. It's so much easier. So here we go. I think my iron is nice and hot now. Okay good stuff. So as I said, all I'm doing is I'm just putting the iron on top and I'm melting it down. You can start to see the wax coming, coming through. It's quite a zen, fun experience. You can see that on my homemade ironing board that I have here, I've got clamps. <laughs> These ones are actually clamps that are for picnic tables and these ones are stationary clamps. Bull flips is what I call them and uh, they're holding my bottom paper down and I find that this works really really well. So I'm just doing it. And you have to remember too that in terms of iron settings, 
In terms of iron settings, different irons will be a little bit different than other ones. So if you're finding that it's taking far too long to melt the wax on the, the acetone silk settings, then for sure turn it up a little bit and keep going. At the end of the day, nothing's going to disaster. It's not going to be disastrous. So there we go. So we're starting to get the wax melted in there. You can see it coming through the paper. It's a very satisfying experience. I quite enjoy this. I quite like pushing the wax around and, and having it come up, come through the fabric and look so nice. Just really enjoy the way it smells too. It's unfortunate that you can't uh, smell it. So. So you can see, obviously, oops, that I need to get a little bit more wax onto this. It's only partially done. So, here we go. See, it's so simple just to add a little bit more. There we go. Now we're cooking with gas. I'm just going to reposition that top black, uh, parchment. Just repositioning the top parchment so I could have enough room to uh, to move the iron around without letting any of the wax seep out from between the parchment paper. Just doing a little bit of a round kind of motion with my iron because I find that it tends to kind of work it into the fabric a little bit better. You can see that spot there that's kind of escaping out of the uh, the parchment. So what I find is that the smaller size wraps are a little bit easier to do in the uh, ironing board method. Okay, so, so while we're waiting for this to dry, I'm going to show you how I made my, my ironing board, my craft ironing board. So all this is, and I'm very proud of myself for how I made this, so I'm just taking off this bottom piece of parchment and putting it to the side. So you can see I've got, basically, it's the same pattern as my wall hanging, haha, <laughs> because it's a duvet cover, and this is a pillowcase. I made a number of these for participants in my uh, DIY workshop. So this is a regular piece of pine board, and I went to the thrift shop and I bought a giant wool blanket and I cut the wool blanket down into a number of pieces, small pieces, to coat, to cover my wooden boards. So um, I cut it down into pieces and folded it around and then I used the big stapler to uh, staple it all down just like that. A couple spots I was worried that it was going to punch right through so I doubled it up. And you can see here on the top where the staples came through, I had to go through and just um, hammer and push them down so that it wouldn't stick up and be pointy. And then all I did was just covered it with a, with a uh, pillowcase and um, presto bango zim zam zango. It was all done just like that. So as I was saying earlier, I find that with the ironing board method, the bottom parchment paper has a tendency to lift up. So I decided to um, use clamps to hold it down. So these are the kind of clamps that you use when you go to a picnic to hold the picnic table cover down. So they just slide right onto the um, onto the ironing board cover just like that. And I only could find a couple so I thought I would try using these um, stationary clips and they work just fine as well. So when I have these here and then I put my bottom parchment paper down it just holds my bottom parchment paper in place so I don't have to worry about it lifting at all and for the price for the amount of work this was and the amount of cost it is to get a new ironing board cover I think this is a great solution especially if you're making more than just one or two wraps, so you expect to do it a couple times. So then there you go. Easy peasy. So now you know how to make your own beeswax wraps using the iron method and pedal and hive DIY wax formula. And you know how to bonus make your own iron ironing board, craft ironing board. So uh, don't forget.
don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, and stay tuned till next time for all things beeswax wraps. Okay, bye.